All right, we are here for the first episode of ASN Weekend Recap. Uh, this is just going to be uh, myself, Carson Ward. I'm just going through uh, what's going on in high school football um, and explaining uh, why we ranked the teams the way they did. Um, the way we do our rankings is through a composite system, so a couple of people's um, rankings all put together, and uh, they create this um, the, the rankings that we have. Uh, for each class, and we're going to go uh, class by class and just uh, kind of explain um, why our rankings are the way they are. Um, getting into conference play this week, we felt like it would be a good time to get this going, and uh, this is something that we're looking forward to doing for the rest of the football season, uh, heading into the playoffs. and um, Got some other things, too, that we're excited about uh doing the rest of this season, of course, our Game of the Week live streams and a couple other things we have in the works as well that we are excited uh, to get started uh, this season. So let's go ahead and get to Class 2A, the Class 2A rankings. Um, right here, number one, Conway Christian. Um, the reason that Conway Christian is number one is we've had them at number one um, since they beat Hazen by 28 in uh, Week 0, and uh, we felt like that was an impressive win. Uh, since then, they've beat Quitman by Mercy Rule and then uh, beat 3A Atkins um, at Atkins. And um, so there's really been no reason to drop them uh, from that point. Number two, the Carlisle Bison. The Carlisle is a team that has probably been the most impressive team in Class 2A this season. Um, had a win uh, in Week 0, I believe, over uh, Drew Central. And then uh, went on to beat Junction City in their next game by a score of 41 to 10 and um, just have been pretty dominant. They beat Carlisle 30 to 8 um, on Friday and so that's been a very impressive um, football team in class 2A. Number three, the Mark Tree Indians, of course. The guy over there that everybody's worried about if you're a defensive coordinator is running back TJ Hodges. He exploded uh, against Garden. He was our D3 auto sales uh, MVP of the week. This week, uh, 10 carries, 277 yards, and four touchdowns, I believe, was his, were his numbers this week, which is uh, incredible. Um, number four, the Junction City Dragons. This uh, is a tough spot for Junction City. They started the season um, one and two. Uh, they beat Smackover to get their first win of the season, but they lost to Harmony Grove, Washita County, and Carlisle. Um, in the first two games of the season, uh, they started 0-2, and they finally got a two-point win over Smackover. They had a tough non-conference schedule. Coach Ball ensured that they had a tough non-conference schedule so that they would go in uh, to conference play, uh, being being ready in, in a, a 2A3 conference that looks like it's going to be pretty tough this season. Um, and it's just been a, a hard hard road for Junction City so far. Um but they have some talented players over there. Of course, Dominique Grimes is the one that everybody's going to watch out for. Um, uh, Taylor Owens is another guy who a lot of people are going to be watching for. Um, and we'll get to some players to watch for uh, this week uh, towards the end of this segment where the rankings are. But going to move on to number five now, the Desarc Eagles. A lot of people have been talking up uh, Desarc's um, front on offense they think they have a really physical run game, and of course, with that flex bone that's modeled after uh, the Harding Bison offense, it's going to be pretty physical, and there's going to be a lot of running the ball downhill and uh, getting some of your more talented running running backs or runners open in space. Desert did a pretty good job of that their first few games, and then uh, against Carlisle, just hit a brick wall with a really talented Bison team. Number six, the McCrory Jaguars. Now, McCrory is a team that's been pretty impressive. Got a win over Clarendon. And um, they have a running back named Levi Tucker. Levi Tucker is one of the main reasons we have them ranked in the top 10 at the moment. Number seven, the Cross County Thunderbirds. They have uh, two really de talented defensive linemen, Roger Williams and Danny Beal, who are probably going to get a lot of looks from a lot of different uh, schools for them to play at the next level. And uh, just really uh, fantastic job by Van Pascal to get his group Um into this top, into the top ten, uh, playing like they're a top ten team, and they're a team that I think will get better every game as they get more 
uh, assimilated into what Coach Pascal wants them to do there. Number eight, the Dirks Outlaws. Uh, Dirks is a team that, in my opinion, has pretty much looked better uh, every game as the season has gone on. They lost to Falk early in the season and then got a win over Mountain Pine. And then uh, this week got a win over Parker's Chapel. Um, and they've just, they've really just kind of rolled their way uh, two and one. After that first game against Falk, their offense has been tremendous. Put up, you know, 45 plus points in back to back games. So a really exciting, uh, really exciting uh, Dirks team who we have ranked at number eight. Number nine, the Lafayette County Cougars. Excuse me, the Lafayette County Cougars. Lafayette County, um, they have a they they have a team. They they played uh, Dequeen within one point. That's a five A school, and uh, they just they've got some uh, terrific athletes, and they have a, a coach and, and Adrian Ivory. That's um, he's he's really excited about their program and where that program is headed. They're going to get into conference play in that tough two A three conference. They're going to run into some teams like some Junction City, like Junction City. And like Garden and like Mineral Springs, uh, and like Murfreesboro, um, so it's going to be a tough road for La- uh, Lafayette County the rest of the, the the season. But they've played some tough competition in non-conference that has prepared them to play uh, play really well in uh, conference play. Number ten, finally, the Poen Indians. Uh, Poen is a team that's led uh, by Colt Barrett. Uh, Colt Barrett is their quarterback, and their head coach is Vic Barrett, his dad. Colt Barrett, I, I was able to see him play in person uh, last season. He's got a rocket arm. He might have the best arm in Class 2A. Um, he's just he's an explosive athlete as well, so you have to watch out for him running the ball too. Um, they do a lot of different things to get him get him involved, whether it's running the ball or throwing the ball. He's a pretty good dual-threat quarterback. And uh, the Indians, uh, they've just got a lot of really talented players over there. They're going to be a physical group every year. Um, and they lost a lot of production from their from their squad last year, but we feel like they're still a top ten team because of um, just the way that program tends to be every year, really physical. And whenever you have the benefit of a really talented quarterback like that, um, things are going to probably tend to go your way uh, if you're a Poen Indians fan. So just breaking it down here uh, again, a lot of people um, are, are probably wondering with uh, the impressive play that Carlisle's had, why are they not ranked? Uh, number one, considering they have beat uh, two top five teams by decisive margins. And the reason that for that is that, that we had Conway Christian ranked at number one um, after week zero, and they haven't done anything uh, to warrant uh, being dropped to number two. Uh, Carlisle um, might take that spot. Uh, I think in my personal opinion, uh, Conway Christian and Carlisle both uh, have a have the best shot of any team in their conference to win their conference this season. And uh, just want to throw a couple of teams out there that probably are going to make their way uh, around the top 10, if not into the top 10, by the end of the season. Uh, Bigelow, of course, the defending state champions, they've had a tough, uh, tough non-conference schedule that's kind of put them down a little bit in our rankings. Um, played some really tough 3A teams and uh, it's just uh, when you when you play tough competition like that it's, it's pretty hard to uh, to, to get yourself uh, you know to get to get a win if you're a, a, a smaller uh, 2A school playing in some really uh, quality 3A teams um, it, it's just it's just tough to get um, it's just tough to get get those games um, in your favor. And especially the way that two A has looked against three A this season, um, a lot of teams um, have have played well, like Junction City against Smackover. Junction City played really well and won that game. Especially defensively, they played really well, holding Smackover to just fifteen points. Um, and then, you know, looking at at uh, the way two A is right now, you you have to throw Garden in there as a name that that might. Uh, make some noise. Mineral Springs had a, as another one of those teams like Bigelow. They played some really tough three A schools. They played Bismarck and Fordyce, and uh, they beat Quitman by five for their first win of the season. They won fifty four to forty nine. And so you know it's just 
it's a really it's a really tar uh, hard road playing three A schools like that in non conference. But you know, um, it's just there's a lot of teams like that. You could probably throw Mount Ida in there too. Mount Ida is a team um, that that uh, under Coach White they have they usually have that uh, split back veer offense pretty uh, down pretty well. And then Murfreesboro, that's another team under Coach Brad Cheshire. Um, he's he's a fantastic defensive coach. They had a fantastic defense last season. They led the state in points per game allowed. I think it was just like eight. It was like eight point six points or something like that. And uh, they 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 have had a tremendous defense. Uh, you know, to build on from last year. And so I would say don't count out Murfreesboro uh, just yet. They. Uh, should still have a pretty good season uh, under Coach Cheshire in the 2A3. Uh, another team that I want to throw out there as, as a team that's made some noise early in the season is Baptist Prep. They started off the season 3-0, and um, and the Eagles have had a pretty electric offense uh, so far to start the season. So uh, watch out for them. And I want to, I want to start with the game uh, of Baptist Prep versus Carlisle. That's two 3-0 teams. Most people would probably expect uh, – Baptist Prep uh, to maybe struggle a little bit um, with with Carlisle and Carlisle if if they play really well they should have a pretty good shot at victory there but it's still two three no teams and uh, you know when you have two undefeated teams like that you know both teams are going to bring their 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 A game and both teams are going to uh, put forth a lot of effort and just it, it's going to be it should be a a, a game of you know, whichever offense comes out and uh, performs, you know, similar to the way they have been to start the season, that's going to be the team that wins uh, That wins the ball game. Carlisle has a lot of really good athletes. Baptist Prep is a team that, uh, you know, really uh, ha has has had some, some electric plays that have gone their way, especially against Episcopal. Uh, Aaron Fielder has done a terrific job, and Nick Cumming, their quarterback, has been terrific as well. So, uh, of course, for Carlisle, you have Ty Tangsley, the freshman. You can't uh, you can't talk about Carlisle without mentioning him, really. And then uh, Jaden Elliott, the running back, and Gavin Davis, the wide receiver, and Gabe Boyle, the linebacker. They have just studs um, all over the field. And so Carlisle um, would probably be my pick uh, to win that game. Another interesting game uh, for, uh, of conference play um, in the 2A2, McCrory and Cross County. These are two top 10 teams playing on Thursday this week. McCrory um, and Cross County should will both probably try to run the ball early and often uh, with Tucker for McCrory and then the, uh, with, the, uh, with the flex bone system that Coach Pascal runs at Cross County. You have to expect that that uh, team is going to run the ball uh, early and often as well. Another game to point out would probably be Desark and Earl. Desark um, is a team that everybody has a lot of high hopes for um, in that in that Desark area. Um, Earl is a team that's usually got a pretty high powered offense, and uh, they're another team that I think could probably sneak into the top ten if they have a, if they if they play as well as they can, and uh, just a, a lot of a lot of really good things um, going on for both of those schools. I would pick Desark to win that game. Um, East Poinsett County versus Izzard uh, County. Um, this one will probably be a, a tough game for. Uh, Izzard County, just because of how talented East Points County has been the last couple of years, Jacob Gaines um, is gonna is probably gonna have a great game running the ball, and I would pick East Points County to win that game. Uh, Conway Christian versus Mountainburg. Uh, Conway Christian travels to Mountainburg to open up uh, the conference play, the conference uh, a season uh, for both of those teams. Uh, Mountainburg's quarterback Ryan Allen is a terrific runner. Conway Christian's quarterback Jaron Thomas is a terrific runner. He he made some really good plays with his legs against Atkins last week to propel the Eagles to a three-point victory. Um, and then, of course, Brady Demacus at running back for Conway Christian. Aaron Lovelace is a running back for Conway Christian. And uh, he, they have a lot of really talented players on both sides of the ball. Defensively, you had to talk about the all-conference linebacker, Bo Campbell, uh, all-conference defensive back, Bryce Keithley, 
um, and all state defense, defensive end Garrison Greer. That's that's a game that uh, Mountain Burr is going to have to run the ball very well and, and be very disciplined to win that game. So I would pick Conley Christian uh, to win that one. Uh, Bearden versus Hazen. Uh, Bearden uh, played a team from Louisiana uh, last week and uh, didn't come out and play their best probably. Um, but I think that's a program that's on the rise in Class 2A. Um, Hazen's a team that struggled a little bit to open the season. But uh, I think that J.J. Pinckney is still a really talented quarterback, especially when he can get going running the ball. So I would pick the Hazen Hornets to win that one. Uh, Foreman versus Junction City. Uh, Foreman is a team that has struggled the last few years. Junction City, uh, like I said, might be the most talented uh, team physically and athletically in the entire class. Uh, so I'm going to pick Junction City to win this one in their conference opener. Derricks versus Lafayette County. This is a top 10 matchup that I think is going to be pretty interesting to watch if if the offense for the Outlaws um, can get going like it has the past two weeks, then then they shouldn't have any problem with this game. Um, it is going to be played at Lafayette County, so that might uh, help the Cougars a little bit, but I am going to pick the Dirks Outlaws uh, to get the win in this one. Uh, Mariana versus Mark Tree. Um, Mark Tree, their offense is ridic ridiculously explosive. Kenyon Carter is an explosive quarterback. T.J. Hodges is a four-star running back. He he, it's hard to stop a four-star running back. Uh, it, it regard you know, regardless of who else is on the team, but with all the talent they have surrounding T.J. Hodges, uh, I'm going to have to give the win to Mark Tree in that one. Uh, Johnson County West Side versus Mount Ida. Uh, Johnson County West Side um, has started their season uh, one and one, um, and Mount Ida has started their season two and one. All right, Bearden and Hazen. Uh, Bearden is a team that last week lost to Mount Ida. Uh, Mount Ida dominated in that game, had a really good day rushing the ball, um, and so. You know, um, the fact that Bearden has had a hard time stopping the run um, and the fact that J.J. Pinckney is an exceptional runner uh, for the Hazen Hornets at quarterback, I'm going to have to go with the Hazen Hornets to win this one. Um, even though they have started their season 0-3, I have them picking up their first win in this game. Johnson County West Side and Mount Ida. Uh, Mount Ida is a team that runs the ball exceptionally well. Um, Coach White, of course, as I mentioned, is going to have that team ready to go every single week. Um, but uh, he's a tremendous coach and a, a very experienced one as well. So um, that's a team that's always going to be uh, prepared going into their game. And I would have them beating Johnson County Westside in their first game as a member of the 2A1 conference. Bigelow versus Magazine. Bigelow uh, should get their season back on track after starting uh, a one and two. Uh, they do have a win over the only two A opponent they've played so far, which is the England Lions. Um, so I would have to give Bigelow the victory in this one, and they will continue their conference winning streak. Clarendon versus Hampton. Hampton is a team right now. Um, with wins over Two Rivers and Foreman, they are a team with a winning record at two and one. Uh, however, I'm going to pick Clarendon to win this game. Uh, I think Coach Courtney is going to have his team pretty prepared uh, to win this game, and I think that um, that Clarendon is just is just the more talented team, and they're going to show it on Friday night, and they're going to get the win. Murfreesboro versus Gurdon. Uh, this is going to be a pretty physical ball game. Both teams really like to run the ball. Of course, uh, Murfreesboro runs that, that little I formation, and then Gurdon runs the flex bone or triple option or whatever you want to call it. They run the ball a lot. They have some really talented runners. Um, and so uh, I'm actually going to pick uh, Murfreesboro to win this one in a very, very close game that can go either way. 
Hector versus Mountain Pine. Hector uh, is two and one right now. They have uh, they got a win last week over Danville, forty two to sixteen, and they have a, two wins on the season. Their other win uh, is against Yellville Summit, and they have a loss to Perryville. Um, so they only played three A teams in non conference play and came out at two and one. So a pretty solid job by Hector to start the season. Uh, quarterback Drew Newport will lead his team uh, into uh, Mountain Pine. Uh, Mountain Pine's playing their first game in a few years of 11-man conference football. So it, it might be a little bit of an adjustment for Mountain Pine. Uh, so, I'm going to go, so I'm going to give Hector uh, the victory in that one. Spring Hill versus Mineral Springs. Of course, Spring Hill uh, has started the season 1-2. and two. Um, and uh, Mineral Springs started the season one and two as well. Uh, I am going to give the victory to Mineral Springs in this one, but I do think it's closer than people might expect, but Mineral Springs should get the victory in this game. Bowen versus England. Um, this is this is a, a matchup of a really physical Bowen team and a, probably a really athletic England team. I haven't been able to see either of these teams in person just yet or really watch a whole lot on these teams. Uh, of course, I, I watched Poen play last season, but they're probably a much uh, different team than they were. Uh, however, I am still going to pick Poen to win this game based off of the fact that their quarterback uh, is one of the more talented uh, players in Class 2A. Well, that's going to do it for our Class 2A rundown for this week. We will be back next week for ASN Weekend Recap. Uh, for now, I'm Carson Ward signing off.